This is the Ineos Grenadier, a new make and a new model four-wheel drive that's coming to Australia in 2023. But this thing has an old heart and that is the coolest thing about it. We haven't seen a new four-wheel drive lob recently with things like live axles, coil springs all around, a body on frame construction with a ladder chassis throughout. But that's what we've got here with this Grenadier. It's been inspired by the old Land Rover Defender, but what is this competing with? Obviously, Toyota Land Cruiser in Australia is the number one four-wheel drive in terms of heavy-duty applications, and this Grenadier will come up against that. But I reckon it's going to be people who maybe own an old Defender and aren't taken with the new one, or they've got an old 80 series Land Cruiser that's getting a little bit long in the tooth. They want live axles, they want a heavy-duty application, all those things. This could be the car for them. Now, is it any good? Well, I'm here to give it a drive today. I'm gonna to dig through the interior. I'm gonna have a good look around and see what this thing is like on-road and off-road. So let's get into it. The 2023 Ineos Grenadier is priced from $97,000 before on-road costs. That's after a recent and fairly significant price rise. But don't worry, if you do have your order in time, you will be protected from this price increase. Base specification is a two-seat Grenadier model, and opting for a five-seater model costs an extra $1,000. There are only two variants above that base level. Trail Master, which isn't Trail Master by the way, is priced from $108,525,000 before on-road costs. This is a more off-road focused model, and it picks up a raised air intake, front and rear diff locks, BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, and an auxiliary battery system, amongst other things. There is also the Fieldmaster specification, which is priced slightly less at $107,400, and that goes for things like carpeted floor mats, leather upholstery, heated front seats, and 17-inch alloy wheels. Once again, there are other upgrades here amongst this. For the full rundown on price and specifications of this Grenadier, head over to drive.com.au to read our review and news stories. Under that clamshell bonnet of this Grenadier is your choice of petrol or diesel power, and they are both priced evenly. They're both three liter, six cylinder turbocharged engines sourced from BMW. The diesel option makes 183 kilowatts and 550 newton meters, while the petrol option makes more power, 210 kilowatts, and less torque, 450 newton meters. Both of these run through an eight-speed ZF automatic gearbox, along with a full-time four-wheel drive system and a mechanical locking center differential. The Grenadier has payloads of up to 930 kilos, depending on specification. There's also a 150 kilo dynamic roof load capacity and a 3.5 ton braked towing capacity. The Grenadier is coming to Australia in a few different specifications. There's a base model, and there is this one here, which is the Field Master, and there's also a Trial Master. Not Trail Master, Trial Master. But what we've got here is a little bit more of an urban take, I suppose, and a high specification model. I'll just walk you down here to show you around. We've got optional all-terrain tires on here, but this has the larger 18-inch alloy wheels on the side there. But we do have what I like to see. These are actual rock sliders. They look quite sturdy and it talks about the ability of this Grenadier off-road. They've clearly put the wheelbase nice and long. There's little overhangs on the front and the rear and general clearance off-road seems to be really good as well. We're going to put this thing through its paces a little bit later to see how it actually goes off-road but initial impressions sound really good. Now how cool are these as well? These are almost like a tie down load rack and what they're thinking of doing is having accessories that you can fit on the side here maybe i'm not sure maybe some soft cases or some additional storage something like that they're on each door here there's also ones on the back and i also like these as well these are tie down points and another thing i really like as well let me pop this off here that is a pre-wired accessory power outlet ready to go and that goes to a specially set up set of switches on the inside there. So it's gonna be very easy to mount up accessories. I'm thinking some nice camping lights here would be really cool, something like that. Even a power outlet for an additional whatever it might be when you're camping is really cool to have. This thing seems to be really well thought out for usage in terms of recreational four-wheel driving, but also commercial usage. I'm really excited to see what it's like. Let's see. Here's the interior of the Grenadier. This is a trial master specification we've got. You can see we've got cloth seats but they are still Recaro branded. 
talk about the seats quickly they have great bolstering going on they're quite comfortable and good manual adjustment there is no electric adjustment there that's kind of a little bit too fancy for this grenadier but it's overall a bespoke setup the only thing i can see here is this gear shifter for the transmission which is kind of popped straight out of a bmw but we've got a proper low range transfer case lever there we've got a manual handbrake we've got turnkey star this is all stuff that auto manufacturers have moved away from because they want to increase refinement and technology but ineos is kind of embracing the old school attitude we've got a load of buttons going on here and there is also a lot up the top as well you kind of feel like an aircraft pilot you're about to take off with all of these buttons going on but after spending some time in the car you do get to know where things are they've got a nice mechanical feel going on and i think if you're an enthusiast of a car like a grenadier you're probably going to really enjoy this interior Build quality feels really good. It's comfortable. We've got a couple of cup holders here. We have to excuse this thing. This is a crew car that I'm sitting in at the moment. So this isn't the usual setup here, but you've got a couple of power outlets there. There's USB, USB-C, 12 volt, and a bit of additional storage. Hose out floors. There are bungs in each footwell and in the back in case you want to hose this thing out. All of this is reasonably waterproof as well. This interior is fairly impressive. We've got no instrument cluster in front of us. Instead, there's just a small little display there that has some general buttons in terms of things like indicators, lights, warnings, and that sort of thing. So your speed and other things, your gear shifts, that's all displayed here, along with a tachometer as well. That might not be to everyone's taste, but I've got to say, I don't mind this setup because visibility is really nice through the front there because this dashboard sits low. You can see your speed through the corner of your eye. It's not too bad when you're driving around. But I've got to say, I really appreciate the build quality of this Grenadier. It feels very, very sturdy, and I haven't really had any rattles or anything like that while we've been driving around. I've been doing a bit of off-roading, had a few bumps and scrapes along the way, but this thing does feel really solid. The second row of the Grenadier is a nice place to be. It doesn't feel overly spacious or lounge-like, however. Once again, it does remind me of a Land Rover Defender to a degree. The seating position is high, and it gives good levels of visibility through all of that flat glass around you. There are air vents in the back here, as well as power outlets and small storage bins in the doors. The boot, which is accessed through those cool asymmetrical barn doors, measures in at 1,100 litres as a five-seat model, and over 2,000 litres if you fold down that second row. That does sound like a lot of space, but it comes mostly from the height and square shape of the Grenadier, rather than the length of the load space overall. So, in other words, be prepared to stack. So we're halfway through the first day of driving this Grenadier. We're currently on an off-road driving course. Apparently it used to be a golf course once upon a time, but now it's used for the slopes and the hills and that sort of thing. We're doing some testing of this Grenadier. There's going to be more extreme stuff coming up, and that's tomorrow. But I want to give you some initial impressions so far of what this Grenadier is like on-road, because I have done a bit of that, and also off-road. I'm lucky to have spent a fair bit of time behind the wheel of things like Land Cruisers, old Land Cruisers, old Land Rover Defenders, that sort of thing, as well as new four-wheel drives, the more common four-wheel drive ute that we get these days. This Grenadier feels naturally a lot more like an old Defender to drive off-road. It does feel different in terms of things like suspension and that sort of thing to a Land Cruiser. We've got live axles front and rear, but we've got coil springs. Now, one thing I really like about this car is the suspension tune off-road. It feels quite supple. This is a heavy-duty car overall. It's got a pretty big payload of around 700 kilos, but it doesn't feel ultra-stiff. There's progressive rate coil springs all round, and the damping does feel to be quite bang-on for a four-wheel drive off the showroom floor. In comparison to most other stock standard four-wheel drives, this kind of feels like it's already had an aftermarket suspension kit put in it with a two inch lift and some more heavy duty damping and that sort of thing. It feels actually quite bang on. We haven't done any load test driving yet. However, that will come with time. Got a little bit of a hill climb here in front of me. It's fairly steep. It's wet and boggy and I can see where the car has been bottoming out. I think it's on that rear skid plate at the back. Now let's see how we go. Got a three litre turbo diesel, six cylinder, that's sourced from BMW. And the calibration of the throttle feels pretty good. It's not too responsive or peaky. You need to give it a little bit of a shove to get what you want. That's kind of what you want for off-roading. 
but this suspension feels stable. It's a fairly rutted climb, this one. Got the rear diff lock in, no issues with traction here at the moment. This would be capable of a lot more challenging terrain than this, I think. And we are gonna do some more of that stuff a little bit later in this drive. Now behind that six cylinder engine, we've got a automatic transmission. It's a ZF eight speed auto, the eight HP. Now if you know anything about cars at all, you will know that gearbox because it's been in just about everything. And in just about every case, it's been a fantastic transmission. And that is the same case here as well. It does feel really good, makes good decisions. It's fairly smooth, but it does shift quickly when you need it. And it's a good companion to this six cylinder engine. I want to give just a few initial impressions of this Grenadier on the on-road driving we've been doing so far. Now you've got to remember this is a new four-wheel drive, but it definitely has an old heart. It's got a lot of ingredients that have been extinct in other makes and models for quite a long time. Live axles front and rear, ladder chassis, body on frame design overall. This has more in common with the old Land Rover Defender, mechanically speaking, than the new one does. It's got coil springs as well. Now the front suspension is a five link setup that is similar to what you would find in a Jeep Wrangler, for example. And the rear is a five link as well. So that's similar to a Wrangler, also a Land Rover Defender. Dropping down a fairly steep hill here at the moment, got hill descent control on. And the good thing about this is it's pretty nicely tuned. It catches the car quite quickly. Gearing is good as well. First gear seems to be quite low. You can hear that scrabbling away there a little bit, but it's doing a good job. And what I do like, is that the hill descent control is able to be controlled by these cruise control buttons on the steering wheel so you can dial it up and down as you need that's a good thing to have and it makes the system just a lot more usable for regular four-wheel driving the steering feel in this grenadier is old-fashioned i would say it's got a little bit of vagueness there in the middle that you probably wouldn't be used to if you're more used to driving cars that have a more modern design especially with independent front suspension it reminds me of my old land rover defender although this one is much newer drives much nicer and is less worn out overall but it's still different this is not like an suv this is not like a passenger car this feels like a four-wheel drive and if you don't mind that if you enjoy it you will love this but if you don't really subscribe to that so much you'll feel that sort of vagueness on the highway mostly there's just a little bit of off-center stuff there going on but one thing i did note is that when we got onto a more winding country road the steering felt like it balanced down a lot more i think i got used to the car a little bit and it went through the corners quite nicely there was a good steering feel on offer there it was good ride compliance as well it felt fairly comfortable now that is initial first impressions after a couple of hours behind the wheel so We'll probably have a little bit more to say about this car a little bit later on during this event and of course when future reviews come but so far first impressions are quite good obviously this grenadier needs to be good off-road needs to have a good towing capacity good payload good durability and all those things but the other thing it needs to be comfortable and good to drive on road on a daily basis because this is probably going to be a daily driver for a lot of people and if you want to do a Simpson Desert crossing in this car, you still got to drive a couple of thousand Ks on the blacktop to get there. So what's it like on the road? I was a little bit worried about this car. It's from a new manufacturer and hasn't got any runs on the board yet. So I didn't really know what to expect. Beam axles front and rear. It's got an old school chassis, which generally speaking doesn't bode well for the way it drives definitely you can feel it this reminds me of my old Land Rover Defender this just feels a bit less worn out a bit tighter you know the bushes aren't all buggered underneath it's pretty good overall I have to say I'm currently sitting on the highway and it's probably the worst representation of this car is the steering on the highway at highway speeds when you're dead straight there is a bit of a flat spot in the middle there of um, vagueness i suppose you'd call it and it just takes a little bit of correction all the time to make it on the straight but the second you start going through corners start loading up the steering a little bit the steering feels quite good it's not a floaty ride the body control is good as well this is nothing like an suv i have to say it's very different to that overall but what i do like is the ride the ride quality in this car feels really good. I spent a bit of time in this thing off-road, spent a bit of time on-road, 
on high speed dirt and that sort of thing, the ride does feel really good. So the suspension, it's coil springs all around. We've got a progressive rate coil in the front there. And then there's also a coil at the back, which is a standard rate across the board, but they do put different rate springs in according to the specification of the car. So if you're gonna fit a roof rack on, they'll probably put a stiffer spring in the back. And if you throw some more options on, it does move around a little bit. But I've got to say, a live axle four wheel drive, this is actually pretty good. The seating position is good, the ergonomics are good. You've got tilt and reach adjustment through the steering column and these Recaro seats, they've got nice bolstering going on with a good level of adjustment as well. The one negative I've really got with this car is the uh, footwell for the driver is a little bit small. I'm pretty sure that the exhaust manifold and the turbochargers and that sort of thing eat into a bit of space here. So the spot for your left foot is in a slightly funny position. Um, it's not too bad once you get used to it, I have to say. I haven't got the longest legs in the world, so if you're a bit taller than I am, especially through the legs, maybe you won't be as comfortable as others, but it's not too bad. There's a spot there for your left foot. These are all automatic only, so you don't have to worry about that third pedal. And I've been spending, you know, up to an hour and a half of driving this car on country roads and highways, and it does feel pretty comfortable overall. It's not as easy to drive as something like a 300 series Land Cruiser, a new Land Rover Defender, or something like that, but it is a lot better than a 70 series Land Cruiser. And that is kind of what this car is competing with, I think, in terms of the durability, the practicality, the off-road focus, and that sort of thing. So you've got a choice of a petrol or a diesel BMW sourced three liter six cylinder engine. This is currently the petrol here but the diesel is probably my choice, and I think most Australians will opt for the diesel as well. Both of them, fantastic engines. They're smooth, they've got a nice noise, they've got enough performance for the application. These are not rocket ships by any means, but not to 100 in 10 seconds for the diesel-powered Grenadier is plenty enough, and it feels talky and relaxed, and I think that is really important. Eight-speed ZF gearbox, it is really good. This is a gearbox that's used in so many applications. It's been around for quite a while. It's such a well-known element in new cars and in this application, it continues to be a great choice and it matches well. We've got a full-time four-wheel drive system with a locking mechanical center differential. There's no clutch packs or anything like that. This is kind of old school in that regard and I like it, it works well. One little element I would add in terms of the off-road driving with this gear shifter, this is a shifter that's pulled directly out of a BMW pretty much. It's not unique to the Grenadier. When you put it across into manual mode and you're shifting up and down, you can accidentally put it back into drive if you don't shift it in the right direction. Very small detail, but worth noting nonetheless. Visibility is fantastic. There's a big windscreen in front of you because you haven't got an instrument binnacle in front of you as well. The dashboard is low, so you can see the corners of the car. You can see what's going on. The windows are big. You've got a big flat windscreen in front as well. This reminds me a lot of a 70 series Land Cruiser, maybe a 76, for example, a Land Rover Defender, but just new new and really nicely tuned and honed overall. There is really a lot to like about how this car drives in terms of the ride, the powertrain, and the combination of it all, I think. We haven't been able to do anything in terms of loaded performance or towing performance as yet. We'll have to wait for that, probably until we get the car in Australia and do our own testing. But you've got around a 700 kilo payload in the Grenadier, depending on specification, obviously. So that is a good number. It's definitely a lot more than a 300 series Land Cruiser, for example, especially in those higher grades. And it matches up well with the new Land Rover Defender. It's worth noting that the curb weight of this Grenadier is surprisingly quite high, or maybe it's not surprising. 2.7 or 2.8 tons overall is quite a big number. And well, you can see where it comes from. You've got steel bumpers, front and rear. You've got big tires, big wheels, and that sort of thing. And I'm sure they could have made this a little bit lighter if they started to skimp around the place, but they've told us that they didn't want to compromise the durability and toughness of this car through the powertrain, 
through the differentials and all of that sort of thing. So 2.8 tons, maybe that's just the price of doing business. Both engines make a bit of noise. They haven't put a lot of sound deadening into these cars and I think that's actually great. This is the kind of car that you don't want to be too quiet and refined, I think. You want to hear that noise and I especially like the rumble of that diesel six cylinder engine. It's smooth, most six cylinder engines are smooth but it's got some nice noise about it and I do really appreciate that. worth being clear about this Grenadier, I think this car is not for everyone. Ineos doesn't expect to be selling huge volumes of this vehicle around the world, and it's probably not going to be to everyone's tastes. If you really value things like refinement, steering feel, and that sort of thing, you want something like a Kia Sorento maybe, a seven-seat SUV, a new Land Rover Defender perhaps. This is probably not the car for you, but there is a small group of people who have been very excited about getting behind the wheel of this Grenadier. They've been longing for another option four-wheel drive that's got things like live axles, coil springs all around, a real focus on off-road capability, usability as a tool, as a thing that you might be using for recreation or for work. And I've got to say, I'm really impressed with how Ineos has put this car together. It doesn't feel rushed, it feels cohesive overall. The ride quality is good. I think the interior works, as long as you're not afraid of tons of buttons in there but i think it does work from a practicality point of view off-road is good the ride comfort that's fantastic as well and the steering feel yes it is a little bit old school but if you're used to that you may be coming from an old vehicle or you've got a lot of experience with something like a land cruiser or an old defender you'll probably find this quite enjoyable to drive looking forward to getting more testing under the belt of this grenadier when it lands in australia and that's going to be in the middle of the year. So stay tuned for more reviews of the Ineos Grenadier at drive.com.au.